Alright, so the future of cloud is here and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you the top 5 important trends you'll need to know for this year. These are trends that are affecting how cloud providers operate, how businesses use the cloud, as well as what employers are looking for when hiring candidates. Now, if you're someone looking to grow in the cloud space, you'll need to rethink the way you learn and upskill. Because the learning roadmaps that worked last year may already be outdated. In fact, if you're still following advice from 3 to 4 years ago, you definitely need to watch this video. The tech industry is changing so fast. With the explosive growth of AI, companies are struggling to figure out the exact talent they need. I mean, just take a look at this chart showing how fast the field of prompt AI engineering is expected to grow over the next 10 years. The last thing you want for yourself is to spend months learning something only to realize that it's being phased out. And so in this video, I'm going to be walking you through the five trends that are shaping the future of cloud computing, not just with AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud, but the entire cloud landscape. I'll be sharing exactly what you need to know to adapt to these changes, as well as how to stay relevant so make sure you watch all the way to the end. All right, let's get into it. Trend number one is the AI in everything trend. Over the past two years, we've seen AI go from something very experimental to something that's embedded in everything we see online. People are generating LinkedIn comments with ChatGPT, writing automated emails, and even creating hyper-realistic videos with AI. A perfect example is what has happened recently with the rise and fall of Studio Ghibli style AI images. People use ChatGPT to generate these anime-inspired versions of themselves, and it went absolutely viral. Cloud usage spiked so hard that even Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, tweeted, please chill with these images because their GPUs were getting so overwhelmed. But this also sparked an ethical debate. The original Studio Ghibli creators never actually gave permission for their style to be replicated like that. In fact, some people even called AI animation an insult to life itself. So yeah, definitely keep this in mind next time you generate images with AI. Now, what does this mean for the cloud? Well, cloud computing is the backbone technology that's powering this AI in everything trend. Whether it's generating images or writing content, every single interaction runs on cloud compute, storage, and APIs. This, of course, means that the demand for cloud computing resources will only continue to grow. And it's not just consumer tools like ChatGPT that use the cloud. AI is now built directly into cloud platforms themselves. Let's take Amazon Q, for example. It's an AI-powered assistant designed by AWS that's for developers, cloud engineers, and even business users. Amazon Q is integrated right into the AWS console, and you can use it to generate code, troubleshoot issues, issues, write documentation, and even more. Honestly, I could go on and on about the cool intersection between cloud and AI, but here are the three things you'll need to know if you're someone already working in tech or looking to land a job in the cloud space. First, AI skills are a must-have. You don't need to build your own models, but you do need to understand what these tools do, how to use them responsibly, and how to integrate them into your cloud workflows. Second, remember that cloud infrastructure is what makes AI possible. Almost every AI interaction relies on the cloud, so if you can understand how cloud platforms platforms handle scale, provisioning, and cost, you're already ahead. And third, this AI and cloud crossover is exactly where hiring will be. More companies want people who understand both cloud and AI, and not just one or the other. So moving forward, AI won't be treated as a separate tool. As more AI tools roll out, cloud usage is only going to increase. Speaking of an increase in cloud usage, trend number two is all about cost optimization and sustainability. Now, there's already a lot of companies and startups that focused on bringing costs down and also resource optimization optimization in the cloud. AWS themselves have tools like the AWS Cost Explorer that helps you visualize and manage your cloud costs over time. But at this point, it's not just all about financial savings. It's about the negative impact that the cloud is bringing to the environment. Over the next few years, we're going to hear a lot more conversation around how to use the cloud sustainably. Why? Because a lot of people don't realize that large language models like ChatGPT don't just use compute power. They also use a surprising amount of water. One research paper even estimated that a single ChatGPT session could consume half a litre of water in order to cool the data centres. And in 2023, Microsoft also said that the company consumed 34% more water than the previous year. And this was believed to be due to Gen AI research. And so if you're someone looking to work in cloud or AI technology, start asking yourself questions like this. How can I optimise my workloads? Am I running resources that don't always need to be on? And can I switch to a more sustainable service type like serverless or managed offerings? As a cloud learner or developer, this really matters because companies will start asking their employees to not just consider the performance of things, but also the carbon footprint that they're bringing to the world. All right, trend number three is that security is now a core expectation. When I worked as a solutions architect at AWS, we always said that security is job zero. There was a culture of everyone at AWS being responsible for security, from CEOs and CTOs, all the way to data center operators, engineers, and even interns. Now, if you're not sure why security is always being taken so seriously, you'd be surprised how many 
real world breaches happened because someone accidentally left an S3 bucket open or forgot to restrict IAM permissions. In fact, in the recent years, Amazon S3 has accounted for over 60% of data breaches due to misconfigurations. This costs companies not just hundreds of thousands of dollars, but also potential legal consequences and public backlash. You don't need to be a security expert to work in tech, but it does help to take a more proactive approach and keep security front of mind when you build solutions in the cloud. If you're interested in seeing how cloud security plays out in real organizations, I'd like to share with you something cool that Veronis is doing in the cloud and AI security space. For context, Veronis is a data security platform that helps organizations secure sensitive files, monitor internal threats, and prevent data leaks, especially in complex cloud environments. With the rise of AI agents and AI co-pilot tools, companies are now facing a new challenge, which is AI tools accessing sensitive internal data. Veronis helps prevent that by securing the data that's being used in AI systems. This includes flagging risky AI prompts and managing unauthorized data access. If you want to see how your organization stacks up, Veronis is offering a completely free cloud data risk assessment. This is a super practical way to identify your company's biggest security risks. You can check it out using the link in the description below. Okay, trend number four is serverless now becoming the default. This trend has been around for a few years, but it's now more widely adopted than ever before. For those who need a quick reminder, serverless is basically a way of building and deploying applications without having to manage the underlying servers. Instead of provisioning and managing EC2 instances, the cloud provider takes care of the scaling, patching, and resource allocation for you. This is commonly done through services like AWS Lambda, Azure Functions, and Google Cloud Functions. Now, the reason I wanted to highlight this trend in today's video is because it's no longer enough just to understand how to launch EC2 instances or create VMs. If you're learning cloud right now, you should also be building serverless projects using services like AWS Lambda, API Gateway, DynamoDB, and so on. By the way, you can check out my beginner and intermediate cloud project guides for exact step-by-step -step cloud tutorials. The link to both is in the description below. But yeah, according to a 2025 research report, the global serverless market is already valued at 24 billion and is expected to grow over 14% every year. In my perspective, 14% is a bit of an underestimate, especially if you factor in the expected growth of AI workloads over the next few years. And so when you're building cloud projects, try leaning into a serverless first mindset. Instead of learning about individual services, what I recommend doing is to look into common serverless patterns that you can adopt. Even deploying a small application without using EC2 is a good start because the sooner you can get comfortable with serverless, the more future-proof your cloud skills will be. All right, the final cloud trend I'd like to share is the shift from multi-cloud to cloud agnostic. In my 2024 cloud trends video, I shared that multi-cloud was the goal for many companies. But today, most are realizing that the cost and complexity just isn't worth it. The shift now is towards being cloud agnostic, and that means building systems that can move between cloud providers if needed without having to handle multiple servers at the same time and multiple environments daily. To achieve this, organizations are increasingly adopting technologies such as containers and Kubernetes, infrastructure as code services like Terraform, as well as open source databases and systems. There's a whole world out there beyond the three major cloud providers, so here's my advice. If you're learning cloud right now, focus on one cloud provider, for example, AWS and develop a strong foundation in it. But at the same time, also make sure you know how to build applications and solutions in a way that's transferable between cloud providers. I have a set of five advanced AWS projects that are coming out very soon, and one of them teaches you how to build a multi-cloud weather tracker website with disaster recovery using Terraform. Hopefully by the time you watch this video, my course will almost be ready. But if not, you can keep an eye out for it on my learning platform, Zero to Cloud. I also have an all-in-one bundle that gives you lifetime access to all of my current and future courses. So once you buy the bundle, you'll never have to pay for any of my courses again, even when I release new ones later down the track. All right, this brings us to the end of this video. Please let me know in the comments which cloud trend was your favorite and let me know if this video was helpful for you. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.